just going to show my face, so I won't be in trouble. Bar one. How long ago did they call? Uh, Good to see you, brother. Hi. You know, you know, Brenda. The pace of his days on Capitol Hill. In one evening, I went to like seven reception. Gives no hint of his 70 years. Oh, go, go, no, go ahead. Oh, you're going up. I'm going down. Welcome. Congressman John Lewis started this day at 7 a.m. At the debate for Ways and Means. Today, the House will vote on health care. Oh, Ways and Means. And between committee meetings and his scheduled late afternoon speech on the House floor, the repeal before senior to pay wherever he goes, he's greeted with hero status. How are you doing? By Democrats. From We're with the UAW. Chicago. And Republicans. This morning. Yes, how you doing? Bean and plain ordinary people. You are a hero of this nation. John Lewis is a living legend, one of the architects of a desegregated America, alongside Dr. Martin Luther King, whom he wishes could still give him guidance. Even sometimes when I'm sitting on the floor of the house, uh, maybe I'm going to speak, maybe I'm going to say something, I said to myself, I wonder what would Dr. King do? I wonder what would Dr. King say? Private thoughts about the great man who changed Lewis's life and put him, too, on the path of greatness. I had been hurt, so I had a patch on my head. President Obama will honor John Lewis with the Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor a president can give. It is a great honor. He was told a few months ago. And I said, Mr. President, you need to stop. You keep on talking, you're going to make me cry. And he sort of said, go ahead and cry. And you did? I did. Recognition of his work conducted in the streets of Nashville and Montgomery, Birmingham and Selma back in the 60s. Work with Dr. King that paved the way for such an honor to be bestowed by the nation's first black president. Have you thought about uh, what you'll say? I will be accepting it on behalf of not just myself, but countless individuals that have stood in those unmovable lines in Selma trying to register to vote. For those who sat at lunch counters and went on freedom rides 50 years ago, and for those beaten, even murdered, for the sake of equality. It says something about the distance that I've come. It says something about a power greater than himself and a destiny he had to live. From the Jim Crow days of Troy, Alabama, to the halls of Congress, to the Presidential Medal of Freedom, Congressman John Lewis's life journey is nothing short of a purposed miracle. We're going to walk together. When I heard the words of Dr. King on old radio, it seemed like he was saying, you too, John Lewis, can do something. And he started a journey not for the faint of heart. Does it ever cross your mind, wow, how did I have the nerve? Well, every so often, uh, it sort of said, why, how did you sit on those lunch kind of stool and let someone spit on you? or put a lighted cigarette out in your hair. How do you stay there and let someone pull you off of the stool and beat you? Um, but that's about the grace of God. It wasn't until he got arrested that his mother finally learned he joined the Civil Rights Movement. So she wrote me a letter, and my middle name is Robert. She said, Dear Robert, you went off to school to get an education. You need to get out of this mess before you get hurt. He didn't listen. Leading a march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma proved a mother's intuition true. I have a scar right here, and one in the top of my head. If you feel right there, just a oh, little yes. dent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lewis never imagined violence that day. He just thought he'd be carted off to jail. I was wearing a backpack. And in this backpack, I had two books, an apple, an orange, toothpaste, and toothbrush. This is the first meeting to plan the march on Washington. This is the so-called Big Six. On the left, a 23-year-old yes. John Lewis, who would be the youngest speaker on one of the nation's most historic days. He still remembers his speech. So you tell us to wait. You tell us to be patient. We cannot wait, we cannot be patient. We want our freedom and we want it now. Of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement, John Lewis is considered the most courageous the movement has ever produced. He's also the only one of the six still living. You never know where what I call the spirit of history 
is going to lead you. A lot of time we come out here. The man who so defiantly challenged the nation years ago is now part of this nation's establishment with a reminder every day just outside his office window. I, I understand that you really love poetry. Well, I love, yeah, I love poetry. I love music. A humble man I, uh, whose work helped change a nation. Favorite music? Kind uh, of music? Gospel. I love gospel music. A national treasure still in the fight for justice and equality. Favorite song, favorite artist? Well, one of my favorite songs is a uh, gospel song, is Order My Steps. Order My Steps. Perhaps because it seems something beyond himself has indeed ordered his steps. What memory of your life would you want to relive? Maybe, just maybe, when we were walking between Selma and Montgomery with Dr. King, the sun was shining. And we were just walking, talking. And every now and then someone would sing a song. It was like a holy march. I felt like God Almighty was walking with us.